All right, so Ragnarok. What is there to say about such a staple for Ark's player base? The map has been talked about to death, being in the game for such a long time. As one of the most loved and popular non-story custom arcs in the game, Rag is absolutely a go-to for many. Featuring content from both the island as well as Scorched Earth, giving it a step up from its predecessor, the center, Rag was the first ever official custom arc to incorporate mainline paid DLC content, including most of the creatures, engrams, and items from Scorched Earth. In addition to this, Ragnarok added its own spins on these DLC creatures, which made it a truly unique map at the time of release that didn't just simply borrow from others, but tweaked content, added memorable map design, and single-handedly created a theme centered around Viking and light Norse mythology. So without further ado, let's explore one of the most beloved maps in Ark Survival Evolved, Ragnarok. Hello everyone, my name is Ned and welcome back to the Evolution Guide series. Today I will of course be breaking down Ragnarok as a map in how it compares to the others and what I personally find as the most engaging and unique aspects of this epic, vast, and compelling custom non-story map. We'll be covering biomes and unique points of interest, new mechanics, creatures, caves and artifacts, loot, and bosses. If you end up liking this video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more of this kind of content. So with that being said, first up are the biomes. There may be too many biomes in Ragnarok to count, honestly. Coming up with a list for this one was difficult because of the sheer enormity to the map, but also just how many distinctly different areas exist. On a map like the island, the biomes are broken up in very clear, consistent ways, and there aren't too many. You've got the jungles, the beaches, the redwoods, and so on. On Ragnarok, I have no idea what this biome is, nor this one, nor that one. And despite the fact that the wiki has a name for pretty much every possible zone, there are like what seems like hundreds of these individual zones. So instead, I'll talk about specific points of interest and actually unique biomes that we haven't yet seen in an arc map covered throughout the Evolution Guide series at this point, along with general mechanics in the map. So what exactly is new here? Well, the Highlands biome is certainly interesting, acting as a beautiful Scotland type of area, home to some friendly and also some not so friendly creatures. Next is the Southwest Beaver Place, which features a really lovely river home to many beavers along with their regular dams. On the other hand, the Beaver Sanctuary is also home to Castoroides, but contains giant beaver dams which are a newly created resource type within the map. You can also get large amounts of cementing paste and wood from these similar to regular dams. Right near the Beaver Sanctuary, the Canyon Biome can be found. This is at least what I call it. It's a fairly unique and absolutely beautiful area that has winding rivers, large vertical rock pillars that are able to be built on, and it's home to lots of spinos and other such waterland hybrid creatures. It even has a giant bridge that goes across it, rounding out a super neat looking place overall. Now, just near the canyons, you've got a couple instances of what we call the murder snow and the murder murder snow. The reason this is even included is because other maps don't have such frozen hellscapes. The murder snow is a specific area of the snow that kills you faster than regular snow. It is super cold. The murder murder snow kills you so fast, your health will melt away like nothing unless you're wearing the most warm armor or have like a thousand ACs going. Just be careful. Now, to get away from the cold, I'd like to briefly touch on the marshlands or swamp area of the map along with some of the islands on the outskirts. The marshlands are like giant swamps, basically, with super huge trees, regular swamp creatures, and cool new ruins, as well as, of course, Shrek's hut. We couldn't forget that one. I'm donkey. Near the marshlands, you can find some islands bordering Ragnarok with pretty unique aesthetics. This one has what looks like a giant garden growing on it, and a really interesting little staircase that goes down inside. And then this one also has some mysterious ruins. Definitely worth checking out, since I've seen a lot of survivors build bases here. Now lastly, when it comes to more unique biomes, we have the whole desert area. This is broken up into desert islands, as well as a massive desert canyon and a dunes biome. 
These are pretty standard and spawn a lot of the same creatures you just find over on Scorched Earth, but there's a particular aesthetic to the canyons and dunes area with many new ruins that really fill it out and make it look like it was once lived in. Definitely another cool place to explore. So that pretty much does it for biomes, but how might you get around to explore them with ease? Well, that's where the wyvern trenches come in, and there are pretty much just two of them. Though they aren't the only places to find wyvern nests, technically due to the presence of ice wyvern nests in certain areas of the map, which we'll get into in a bit. Starting with the Highlands Trench, or the Dragon Malt Trench, this is just right near the Highlands or Scotland area, and is in the form of a regular scorched earth looking scar trench with lava throughout. The other trench is just referred to as the Wyvern Cave and it can be found bordering the south coast of the map. It's this dark cave that has a bit of water, a few giant pink crystals, and just like the Dragon Malt Trench, the fire, lightning, and poison wyvern variants. The trenches in Rag could be considered a lot more bearable than those in Scorched Earth due to the frequency of eggs for having less wyverns to deal with overall. Ragnarok also has a couple new unique resource types that make it stand out from other maps. I may be missing a few, but these include things like the bacillo corpses on the beach that can be mined for resources, the massive beaver dams, like I mentioned earlier, these scattered little boxes that can be broken for loot, like hatchets, pikes, and other early game starting gear, or things like the scorched earth storms, the massive number of unique ruins, the destroyed sunk viking boat that can be found around the coasts or in the ocean, the hot springs near the volcano biome which can give a status effect, and lastly an active volcano event that will occasionally erupt with lava rocks and flowing lava. Ah, that was a long list, and really doesn't even account for all of these cool new types of additions this map has, but there you go. I hope that's given you some idea as to what the environment has in store. I am by all means not the most familiar player with Ragnarok, pretty far from it, I have at most like a hundred hours in the map, but these are just the things I've noticed in my own adventures. With that in mind, you do need creatures to inhabit a map. Environmental additions are cool, but what do they mean if there aren't unique new creatures to help set the theme? Well, that's where, like, a lot of new stuff comes in. Okay, so first up, Ragnarok's main new creature that it's pretty much known for is the Griffin. You may have heard of these things, but they were one of, if not the first, flyer to add shooting off the back while riding as a functionality. Griffins can also do a soaring ability where they build up momentum while flying down, dealing some pretty massive damage if they hit stuff with that momentum. Otherwise, they're pretty much just a standard interpretation of the mythical creature and can be tamed regularly with Trank and Feed. Next up, the Ice Wyvern. This new type of Wyvern variant that Ragnarok added first basically just damages things with this somewhat crappy ice breath, but otherwise it's just a Wyvern that looks slightly different. The Wyverns and their nests can be found in the snow biome, and the nests are kinda just out in the open. Beyond those two, there are several creatures which are purely to be fought and generally can't be tamed. These include the dire polar bear, ice worm male, and the mini bosses including the ice worm queen, lava elemental, and dire spirits, but we'll talk a little bit more about those at the end. Dire polar bears show up in the ice worm cave, and the ice worm males themselves also show up there as well. And that's about it for new creatures other than the bosses. Now onto one of my favorite sections, caves and artifacts. While there are tons of really cool caves in Ragnarok that don't have artifacts and that people usually just build in, in this guide I'm specifically just going to talk about the artifact caves. So starting with the artifact of the brute, you can find it at these coordinates in the redwood biome, just literally chilling right here in this open cave with basically nothing in it but the artifact. This is kind of reminding me of the center and many other custom arcs that follow. Next are the Skylord, Devious, Massive, and Clever artifacts, all of which can be found in the Life's Labyrinth dungeon, with the cave entrance being here. This dungeon is incredibly complex and would take a while to explain how to get through. I myself don't really remember, but I'll leave a link to a lovely video made by fellow arc creator Tia in the description for a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Next, we've got the Carnivorous Caverns. This place is extremely dark and really difficult to find your way around, but it houses the artifact of the cunning and the artifact of the immune in it. The cave entrance is here, and good luck. Again, Tia's guide helped me a lot with figuring out where to go. The artifact of the devourer can be found just in the ocean right here at these cords. 
The artifact of the hunter is inside the jungle cave. At these coordinates, this is also the place where you fight the lava elemental we'll talk about later. The artifact of the pack is found inside the snow cave, the one with the iceworm queen. And lastly, the artifact of the strong is found inside the monkey cave. Coordinates here, though you have to break some rocks to get in. Now, while the caves of Ragnarok are necessary to explore for finding artifacts if you want to do bosses, there is, as you'd imagine, loot in them. And oh boy, is there a lot. And of course, the loot in the map isn't just limited to the caves. There are beacon loot crates, deep sea loot crates, and drops that spawn in the desert. I'd recommend checking out this explorer map for all of those locations if you're curious. Next up, we've got the mini bosses of Ragnarok, which include the Lava Elemental, Ice Worm Queen, and lastly, the Spirit Creatures. First up, the Lava Elemental is found inside the Jungle Cave, and you have to wander into its arena, which is nested deep inside the cave itself, to wake it up. It basically just spawns in once you're there and starts throwing <laughs> lava rocks at you. There are loads of guides on how to kill it. Apparently it isn't too hard, especially if you're using an extinction Velanosaur, but once you do, you want to check its inventory for loot and also look in the final loot area at the end, which has a few drops. Next up, the Ice Worm Queen is found in the Ice Cave. And first, to get to it, you have to fight through the smaller Ice Worm males in this cramped part for a bit. Do be careful, these are pretty dangerous. Eventually, you'll reach the boss room that you have to jump down into to enter. The Ice Worm Queen will start shortly after that, and the battle itself can be cheesed, much like the Lava Elemental Cave. It's not too difficult. At the end is where you'll find the artifact, along with what looks like a wounded, but still breathing, Giga. And lastly, the Life's Labyrinth Cave has what you could more or less call a mini boss battle. At the very end, you'll have to fight Spirit Dire Wolves and Spirit Dire Bears, which aren't too tough, but after you kill them, you're able to grab the artifact and leave. Now, lastly, let's talk about the final boss of Ragnarok, or rather the final arena, since there are multiple bosses in the battle. But before talking about Ragnarok's boss, I'd like to briefly talk about something else that is also an absolute boss, and that is G-Portal. Are you looking for your own ARC server or a server for another game? Well, look no further. G-Portal is a great server provider that has fast, well-performing servers, incredibly responsive support, and great pricing options as well. If you're looking to avoid the hassle of setting up and configuring your own ARC server, go ahead and use my referral link in the description to get your own G-Portal server today and receive a 10% discount on G-Portal servers while helping to support me as a creator at the same time. And of course, thank you so much to G-Portal for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the Ragnarok bosses. Now, what I like about the requirement here is that you have to collect all the artifacts regardless of which difficulty, though Alpha requires a lot of Apex drops. I mean, literally 25 of each. Upon entering the battle, you'll be faced with the Manticore and the Dragon combined. These two have to be defeated within 40 minutes or the fight will fail. Generally for strategy, I'd recommend using a ton of really good fairies and a UD or a ton of rhinos in a UD. That said, if you're bringing rhinos, they need to have really good stamina and you'll want a lot of riders. The only thing that makes rhinos really good is that they can charge and build up damage while being ridden. Without riders to do this, they are not ideal for the boss fight and you'll instead want to use just a bunch of good fairies. Oh, damn it, I keep getting stuck or running out of stamina. These things need more stem. Rexes are also an option, but they can't use veggie cakes because they're not herbivores, and so thus they're not really as good as theories, or like I said, the rhinos, since they can be packed full of veggie cakes to heal. As always, whichever way it's done, once you kill the bosses of the Ragnarok Arena, the total haul for the fight is 65 for Gamma, 200 for Beta, and 410 for Alpha, in addition to the standard Dragon and Manticore trophies and flags along with the Manticore shield skin that nobody likes. I'd rank the difficulty of this fight as certainly being harder than the center, but not as hard as Valguero, and there's a pretty obvious reason why. <laughs> Fly after him! <laughs> oh, don't die, man! Oh, there's a rock! Oh, <laughs> run, Tyler! Run. Try and attack. Oh, no! It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. So ultimately, Ragnarok is a map that I can appreciate a lot. It's beautiful, it's balanced, it has really cool mechanics, and it's such an impressive feat that this was made by a small team of modders and put into the game. While I can appreciate the hell out of this map, for some reason I personally have never, throughout playing it, been that attached to it like I have with other non-story maps like Valguero, for example. But I know it is a really important map for a lot of you, so I just wanted to do it justice by describing its strongest suits and features. This guide in particular wasn't super in-depth, like I've done with other maps, namely the story maps, 
But the reason being is that I honestly don't like talking about the same things over and over again. You all know what a jungle biome looks like. You all know what a beach biome looks like. You all know how to use a resource map. And so I really wanted to go over new stuff, things that Ragnarok has that either was first seen on the map or are exclusive to it. Overall, there isn't really much I find wrong with Ragnarok. It just reminds me of the 2017 days of Ark and man, do I miss those. So with this knowledge of how the map generally works with the biomes and general features, caves, artifacts, loot, and bosses, I wish you luck on your Ragnarok adventures. Yo, thanks for watching this video, everyone. If you liked it, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel for new ARC content every week, and as always, I will talk to you next time. Good luck, survivors.